Hey gang, Carl White here, broadcasting from the secret headquarters here at the Mortgage Marketing Animals, and you're listening to Loan Officer Freedom, number one podcast in the world today for, for loan officers. Closely, closely followed though, just barely, uh -huh. and, I, and I, I don't even know I could say follow now. I would say, I, I think it's two down. racehorses racing side by side, nose to nose, heading for the- uh, heading We're for in the, the draft. Line. We're running in the draft. We're going We're faster in the together. You, you know, you make me run, you, you, you know, with, with you running with me, Steve, I, I just run yeah. a better race, man. I just want I you to know that. I, I really appreciate you. I just run I a better too. race. You know, it's, I I, I've always thought that, that, uh, and I'm not much of a football person, but uh, with uh, Tom Brady and uh, Tom Brady was quarterback, Bronk was the receiver. I, I honestly believe that Tom Brady would have just been okay had it not been for Bronk. And I always thought that Bronk would have been just okay if it wasn't for Tom Brady. And I think the two of them just had magic together. So, uh, I, so I appreciate agree. you, brother. Oh, hey, yeah. so, um, so what we're going to talk about today is hmm. hard times, yep. thank goodness. Yep. Hard times, thank goodness. Mm, and like so I'm reading this book yeah. on the Wright brothers, mm. right? So, uh, uh, you know, and I think everybody knows who the Wright brothers are. They uh, went to Kitty Hawk and were the first ones to fly. They weren't the first one to fly a plane, by the way. They were the first ones to fly a manned or a human on the plane plane. Yep. Yep. So somebody else beat them to it as far as like a kite goes, but they're the first one that strapped a body to it and, and, and kind of, let's, let's say it went all in, right? That's it. Yeah. But get this, man, let me tell you what you likely don't know or what, what most people likely don't know. Uh, two things, two things here. So thing number one, that how they got interested in flying is a very interesting story. So first of all, uh, some attribute it somewhat their grandfather gave them a little toy like a helicopter thingy it's like a you, you pull a string and the little top would sp you know spin up in the air a little bit and then come sure. up and come back down but where where they said they got interested is uh and i believe it's it, i think it was orville it was either or so it's orville and wilbur right? I, th I think it was orville got typhoid fever mm. and so the two brothers uh this is what they were in their early they were in their teens uh, they lived in the same house. Wow. Uh, they had a shared bank account. I mean, they, when you say they were like brothers, they were, they, yeah. they were, they were like brothers, right? Yeah. So Orville caught typhoid fever and back then, so now you're talking about the late 1800s, uh, when you call it typhoid fever, oftentimes died. It was deadly. Yeah. It was deadly. Like, yeah. I don't know if it was most, but mm -hmm. very often, right. And maybe most, but very often. So Orville caught typhoid fever and he was laying in bed, had 105 uh, temperature. He was delirious, going in and out of consciousness. And his brother Wilbur sat beside him in that bed and was reading to him to try to keep his mind functioning, uh, to, to keep him conscious. And what he was reading him was uh, he just grabbed some magazines and it happened to be something like scientific science today, you know, kind of thing. And it was stories about the theory of the possibility of flying. Mm. And so while he was sick, one brother read to the other, all these articles about flying, it just, it was this there, they had to have something. And he just, I don't know, grabbed that from somewhere and just opened the page and just started reading about flying. And uh, I think it was like about two months later, two months later, Orville finally was able to get out of bed and they saw that he was going to live. And they had, he was like, dude, I, I didn't catch all of that. I catch some of it, but tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. Now, now understand that they, it's incredibly likely they would have never flown that plane had Orville not ca contacted typhoid fever. Mm -hmm. And so one way of looking at it is typhoid fever, that going through that hard time was likely the best thing that ever happened to those two brothers, either because uh, otherwise we certainly wouldn't be talking about them today. That's for darn sure. Mm -hmm. Right. And they ended up making, even in their time, tens of millions of dollars on these on, 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 on flying machines. Right. All coming from 
him having typhoid fever. Mm -hmm. And I thought, isn't that interesting? I thought that was very interesting. Uh, it, you know, it, 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 I, I think one thing that we have to understand yes. is that going through hard times is absolutely imperative. I, I can tell you, Steve, I've learned more going through hard times. I've learned more from going through hard times mm -hmm. than I've had from my successes. That when I'm in my successes, man, I'm just kind of skating. Life is good. Watching the butterflies, watching the pet unicorn in the backyard. You know, it's all rainbows. Grouping through it, life. Yeah. It, yeah, it's all good. Yeah. But then when, when you know, when I'm, when the waves are coming up over the bow, yep. that's when I learn how to pilot a boat, mm -hmm. right? I learn how to captain a boat, not during the calm seas, but during the rough seas. Mm -hmm. It makes me a better me. It does. It makes me a better loan officer, Makes, or in my case, makes me a better branch manager, makes me a better uh, advisor uh, to companies. A lot of companies reach out to me, uh, uh, some of them in trouble, and not 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 legal trouble, but, you know, like yeah. they, need, they need to close more loans. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they'll, they'll call me up and reach out to me. And, uh, and after we finish that series of working together, there's no question they're better. It, well, they, they're, they're closing more loans, they're more profitable, uh, but they, they would have never have reached out on that call mm -hmm. uh, had things been going honky dory. And so we just learned to be a better us. I went through, when I went through uh, the crash of 08, Brother, it was devastating. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I never missed it. Thanks to the lovely Mrs. White, never missed a payment, didn't go bankrupt. Nothing went short sell. Uh, nothing got foreclosed upon. So we didn't miss a payment. Uh, and I'm not saying, look, I had some very, very, very dear uh, friends go through some equally hard times that did have to do some of those things. And I'm making no judgment of those people that had to do that because, brother, we were we were like one month from having to do it ourselves, right? I mean, just like literally. And so we learned going through that hard time, yep. the power of reserves. Mm. And so when the market started to shift here a couple of years ago, I mean, I'm not going to tell you I was celebrating, but I wasn't, there's no sweat on my forehead yep. because I've got, uh, number one, I know what to do to, to turn things around and build things back up. Uh, and number two, I've got great reserves because I learned going through that hard times how important it is to have reserves. Yep. So I used to think, you know, I want to have everything invested and everything kind of tied up. So I want my money making money. And I learned uh, through that time, the power of reserves is, is it, was a, it was a great lesson. And yeah. brother, I would, I, I literally have tightening in my chest, the financial pressure that was on me. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. The 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 first thing I woke up in the morning, that's what I thought of. And the last thing I went to bed, that's what I thought of. And all during the day, that's all I thought of. Mm -hmm. And I was having trouble to concentrate on anything else called the hard times. And I vowed right then, this, this will not happen to me again. Like mm -hmm. I've learned, I said, God, thank you for this great lesson. I have learned it now. Yeah. So I got a PhD from Harvard on the power of having reserves, right? And um so yeah, so going through hard times, it, uh, it's 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 you know it's it's the best thing that ever happens to us, me, you. But but and, and it's funny how we go through all this trouble to avoid going through the hard times. Mm -hmm. Yet when we're in the hard times, that's when we do our best. You you think about, dude. Think how many times have we watched? A, just talking about Tom Brady. How many times have we watched a football game, and you know, after what is it? Four, four quarters of 15 minutes, right? So an hour, they play an hour, yeah. right? There's an hour of play time on a football game. The first 55 minutes, they play all 55 minutes and maybe the score is seven to three. Yeah. Right. And then in the last three or four minutes of the game, like each one, like one scores, one touchdown, the other scores, they score more in that last three minutes than they did the rest, the, the other 57 calls. Hey, we're, they're down. And then mm -hmm. they get on top and the other team go, oh, crap, we're down now and, and the game's almost over. And so everybody plays their best game mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. when they feel the pressure. And so I'm going to say that this, this thing that the industry is going through right now, I, you know, I, and I get it. There's some people going through a hard time and I'm not discounting that, right? But I'm telling you, as long as you stay in the game, 
And as long as you say, hey, how can I get better? How can I keep this from happening again? Uh, you'll play a better game. You'll learn from it. Now, those that say, hey, I, uh, how do you go work at Walmart? Because I think I want to go do that. Th there's no lesson learned there, right? Mm -hmm. And I just think the tr – and Walmart, I'm sure, is a great place to work and nothing against the people that work there. They just don't make 100, 200, 300, 600, a million dollars, right? They just yeah. don't. And and yeah. so the the footprint, the the influence they can have on the community on their community is is as a general rule very limited because they got no resources. Yep. And 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 staying in the game and saying, hey, what can I learn from this? What can I do to achieve greatness? Uh, those people that aren't struggling, I am right now. What are they doing differently? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and I think is, is, is it goes again about like just asking a bunch of good questions, the right questions of the right people when we're going through hard times, that's how you win. And trust me, there's plenty of opportunity to ask bad questions. Like how come they did this? And yeah. how come I'm, 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 uh, you know, so-and-so stole the loan from me. It's the only one I had. Why did he do that? Why did she do it? Those are wrong questions. Right. And it's just better questions about being great uh, and asking people that are experiencing greatness that maybe have experienced struggles in the past uh a lot of power in that so i'm kind of rambling here but am i getting my point across i think 100 percent. you know and, and i think carl you you said um you said a quote earlier i thought it was really good the one about 60 what this is the hardest this job is the hardest sixty thousand dollar job you'll ever have but it's the easiest two hundred and fifty thousand dollar job you'll ever have you know and my think, my dear friend uh mike fisher <laughs> Great. Uh, that's one of his quotes. Just a, a really smart guy, super nice guy. Dude, um, but what a great, what a great perspective, though. If it were easy, and we didn't have to go through challenging times, everybody would do it. And I think the key is this, Carl. It's the belief you can, the belief I can get through this. It's there's a hope to get out. But you know where a lot of that comes from, Carl? It's the people you hang out with. We talk about living in the draft, and I think when you're around others, look, hard times, it. it when the market's challenging, it just means we got to dig in deeper. And then what I try to do is hang out with people like you and say, look, man, Carl's seeing great success. I'm encouraged to have great success. He ain't hey, got nothing. I ain't got. Yeah. Well, you know, but, really. but it's, it's the relationship side of it. And it's mm -hmm. like, if you listen to one side, they literally half of the industry saying the sky's falling. You might as well. Like I heard somebody tell me their branch manager said, you need to go look for a different industry job. Like, I was shocked. I was like, oh, no, 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 wrong person. If you love this industry, you're called to be in this industry. Tough times make even stronger people. And that's where it's like, just get with the right community who is having great success. Like we were talking about it. Christina, we met her at the boot camp this last week. We had hundreds of loan officers flying in. And these people are talking about what great success are having. Carl, 90 days in the business. And she literally is closing six loans this month. Funding six loans, 90 days in, brand new loan officer. So you got one extreme, the sky's falling, there's no business, go find another job in a different industry. And you got another that says, hey, I got a plan. I got, I, all I got to do is take action. And when I get discouraged, do it anyway and stay in a community that's life-giving and sharing results of what's really happening. Well, you and I know this is like the sixth, one of the sixth or seventh best purchase money markets ever. Ever. So the business is there. It's yeah. just, we've got to be doing the right activity, you know, and it even goes back to tough times, make you evaluate the gaps. Maybe mm -hmm. you're making the calls and not getting results because you're missing that one little piece of asking for the business. So, you know, my encouragement is tough times make even stronger people when you're with the right people with a clear plan and continue to show up each and every day, because this is going to pass. Hey, you want to, you want to, you want I, I, I just got this text yesterday from our dear friend, Tam Tammy Saul, right? I, I love, I love dude, she's I love, a, oh, she's dude, I love this lady. I mean, yeah. she, she is, and I don't just love her because of, of, of her actions. She's just an amazing person, right? Yeah. She's very inspiring. And uh, she just texted me this thing. I she sends me these love notes. When I say love notes, you know what I mean? Like these, yeah, these, that gratitude notes. Yeah, yeah, gratitude and words, words of encouragement. So anyway, so she texted me this thing, rate hike, question mark, what rate hike, uh, LOL. <laughs> I just had, and I'm reading this, I just had my best week of new purchase originations ever. Now, keep in mind, this is the first week of October uh, when she sent this, right? Uh, and wait, she wait. closes a lot of loans. Like well, wait, wait, wait. 
so so this is the first week of October as we're recording this. We're in the first week of October or our second week. I think we're in the second week of October. I just had my best week of new purchases ever, meaning actual contacts. This week, not this month, not in process, this week Contract. got 23 new contracts plus seven refinances. Something that, wait, and there's a take-home message there. She's 30% of her business is refinances right now. 30%. Yeah. yeah. 30%. So, so this week got 20 transactions. Got, like yeah, got 23 transactions. new contracts plus seven refinances. That's 30. Even if only 25 of those close, that's a pretty good week. Right. Yeah. So so let's and let's just suppose, I'm not saying what she makes, right? But let's just imagine she makes three thousand dollars per closing. Yeah. Right. That means 75 grand. Wait, wait, wait. For the week, mm -hmm. for the week, yeah. yeah. While others yeah. are thinking, "Hey, you need to go. You're in the wrong industry." How about how about how about asking a better question? Huh? I wonder how Tammy did that. Yeah. Right. I wonder how Tammy did it. Hey, well, it, you know, because if you, you know Tammy yeah. like we know Tammy, <laughs> yeah. I guarantee she did it ethically, morally, yep, and legally. Yep. Right. Hundred percent. So, hey, but did you hear her mindset and perspective? Rate hike? Huh? What rate hike? What rate hike? <laughs> So she understands that people are still buying houses, That's right? Right. So, so while the industry is having a hard time, uh, I I choose to push through it. That's you know, it. it's like that old, um, what's that old saying? Uh, I, I went through hell. I just decided not to stay there. That's it. Move through yeah. it. You know. Yeah. So anyway, hey, yeah, great so topic, man. Great it, topic. It, it, it's hard to embrace a hard time, but uh, you know, it's only when somebody puts weights on our barbell. We, get we grow our muscles. Yeah. Uh, the other day, I was out on my bike ride, uh, Steve, and uh, uh, it, it was cool here in Florida. It wasn't cool. It was not hot. Right? Yeah. It, I can't say it was cool, but it was not hot. So I was out riding my bike, and the wind was coming from the north, and it, it was impressive. Like It was a pretty good, strong wind. And I'm riding my bicycle heading north, and I'm sitting there at first going, freaking wind. You know, uh, this is and, – and, and about three or four minutes into it, I went – man, I'm really having to work. I can feel the burn in my legs. And frankly, I haven't felt burn in my legs. I ride my bike so much. You know, it's just gotten to be a habit. Yeah. And I felt myself like a burn means you're growing. Mm. And so that headwind was actually making me a better cyclist. And uh, I, I don't know if it's, I'm sure it's just my mind, but that's what we are as a mind. The last couple of mornings have been extra easy. Yeah. Uh, I did a, a, I went a little faster today than what I normally have. And, and I think it's cause that headwind that I had the other day, it, it reset my, my uh, effort meter that I had to really get into it to make headway cause the, the wind was so heavy. So mm. that's what the industry right now, there's a bit of a headwind. Uh, Let's make let it make better. you a better person. Let yeah. it make you a better yeah. salesperson. So yeah. anyway, Hey, um, do you want to see the exact plan that, uh, that Tammy did? We'll walk you through it. Uh, it's the same way that we showed Tammy. Tammy made it her own uh, and just really ran with it. And and I'm I, it's my belief that you can do the same thing, right? That's my yep. belief. And so if you just go to freedomclubdemo.com, 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 we'll walk you through the exact same process that we showed her. And uh, and I'm not taking anything away. I want to give Tammy all the credit here. And uh, But I'd like to give you the credit too, that once you see the plan, uh, it's our belief that you can run with it too. Yes. Freedomclubdemo.com. Uh, we'll talk to you inside and we'll see you on the next episode of Loan Officer Freedom. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye. See you.